We are Murray, Heather, Eve, and Pearl Ginnick. In September 2022, we bought this project sailboat. Join us for the journey as we turn this boat into our floating home on the water to hopefully one day sail around the world. So last September, my husband and I bought a sailboat. We bought a Bruce Roberts Meridius 43. That means that the hull is 43 feet and the length overall is 48 feet with the bowsprit. Uh, her beam is 14.8 feet and she weighs approximately 39,000 pounds. So first of all, what we were looking for in a boat. So we wanted it to have at least two cabins and three berths because we have two children. Uh, we needed to have at least one head, preferably two. A well-designed galley, ample living space in the saloon or salon. Uh, safe for ocean going passages, preferably a catamaran, not too many projects, and lots of storage space. What we ended up with was uh, three cabins and seven berths. So that means that there are seven actual designated beds. We're going to be removing one of them. Um, and then there's the dinette that can drop down to be another berth. Uh, there are two heads on the boat. The galley has some design issues, but we can uh, fix those. Uh, the salon has some pretty decent space. It is safe for ocean going as far as we know. It's a monohull, so we didn't get the catamaran. We wanted to get out there sooner rather than later. And if we waited until a catamaran came out within our price range, then we probably would never leave. Uh, unfortunately, it has many many projects which will make for good YouTube but uh, not so great for getting out there sailing and cruising right away. It does have lots of storage. There are some design flaws that we need to either redesign or work around but uh, nothing that we can't solve. How did we find our boat? Um, well I scrolled through Yacht World, uh, Yacht Salvage websites, multi hole uh, specific sales pages, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, but eventually we found it on Kijiji, which is the Canadian version of Craigslist, and she was listed as a project boat. She came with most of the rigging, uh, obsolete electronics, she had a dinghy, uh, a diesel engine, an outboard engine, the appliances, uh, Vetus toilets, Pretty much everything that you needed in order to put this boat together um, and then there was some stuff that was really not useful to us um, including some very old paint uh, it was expensive paint but uh, not something that we were going to trust on the boat um, and then there were some things that we had negotiated to get with the boat as everything that we looked at was supposed to come with the boat and when we went to pick up the stuff for the boat, the owner had uh, seemed to have a either a, a lapse in memory or a change of heart and wanted to keep the little wood stove that was originally supposed to go with the boat. So that was a bit of a disappointment to me. Uh, one of the things that also came with the boat um, that ended up not really being of use to us was some of the sails. So we were told that there was um, a one-year-old Kevlar mainsail. The Kevlar mainsail is off of a racing sailboat. It's not designed for this type of a boat, which we didn't know at the time, and they don't have great resale value. So uh, any value that we put towards that sail um, was probably overestimated. So we did have a few unexpected things. Uh, the biggest thing was that the boat weighed a lot more than we thought. Um, the owner had given me a few different uh, numbers verbally and I had asked him um, what the total weight of the boat was and he said, well, the finished weight is going to be about 38,000 pounds. He told me that the keel weighed about 17,000, but aside from that, he didn't know exactly how much the boat weighed. Um, to be fair, when he brought the boat to Stony Creek, it didn't have the engine, 
and my assumption is it probably didn't have a lot of the woodworking and he likely underestimated how much each of those things weighed. So um, there was no hard feelings whatsoever on that. Um, so we were able to get a second trailer in order to haul it home. It took an extra day and it took a little bit of um, extra money, but at the end of the day, we were able to get our boat home. One other unexpected was that the dinghy and engine that were included with the boat, uh, the dinghy engine ended up having water in it when we got it back to Thunder Bay and when we drove there was no rain, nothing like that. Um, so Colin actually took it apart and was the one who told me that there was water in the engine. So um, he's got that running now, uh, but that was kind of a disappointment. Uh, in this process, we had a few obstacles. Um, so one of the biggest obstacles that we faced was permits. So uh, the first obstacle was finding a trucker who was willing to haul the boat for a reasonable price. The second one was getting those permits. So the South Highway had four bridges that were under construction when we purchased the boat. Uh, my assumption was that by winter time, maybe incorrectly assuming, those would be finished, um, but they were not. And so the other option for highways was the North Highway and it had wide load restrictions on it. We didn't know when those would be lifted. They didn't get lifted until January of 2023. So that created a little bit of an obstacle. Luckily, we had negotiated that if we were unable to move the boat by November 15th of 2022, we could simply pay a storage fee to uh, the seller's daughter-in-law and keep the boat there until we were able to move it. So um, we did negotiate that. We held good on our end. We gave her cash when we picked up the boat and uh, we stayed in contact with them while we were waiting for the permits. Did we do a survey? No, we did not do a survey. Why? Um, basically because we felt that the boat had been built by a sailboat building school. So we felt fairly confident that it was going to float. Um, not just that we felt confident, two previous owners had also felt confident, confident enough to sink a lot of money into this vessel. So uh, knowing that two other people believed this thing would float, we purchased the boat and we believe it will float. Do we know it will float? Well, not until she goes in the water. One of the reasons we didn't get a survey is uh, I have a hard time spending money when it doesn't guarantee me anything. So basically, when we went to buy the boat, in my mind, I was looking at it as if we get a survey and it comes back with something that is a deal breaker then I've wasted all that money on a trip to Stony Creek as well as on a surveyor and on a boat that is 43 foot for the hull and you're probably looking at 20 to 25 dollars a square uh, sorry not per square foot per um per foot of the hull per length um so that's not a little amount of money. So even if it was $20 per foot at 43 feet, or depending on the surveyor, they may charge for the length overall, which would be 48 feet, you know, that's close to uh, $1,000. It's somewhere in, what would we say, if it was $20, uh, 48 feet, so yeah, like $960. Uh, that's quite a bit of money and as much as it can save you from purchasing a boat with some substantial problems, a, a money pit boat, um, I hadn't quite wrapped my head around it at that point. So uh, would we do a survey in the future? I would recommend anybody do a survey. However, just keep in mind not all surveyors are created equal. So I would say that the majority of surveyors in the industry have experience that has taught them what things to look for, what are red flags, uh, how to inspect a boat, all those sorts of things. 
not necessarily that they've had specific training. And I don't think that surveying a boat that you could even have just, you know, a weekend course where you say, this is how you survey a boat. I think it comes with a combination of experience and knowledge that's gained through either education or through that experience. So if you were going to hire a surveyor, just make sure that you look into who you're surveying or pardon me, who you're hiring. Um, surveyors don't, they're not really regulated and that's the biggest problem is you don't know um, who's good unless you have somebody who can refer you. And as we learned with our first boat, um, as soon as you want to launch your boat, if you're launching it at a marina, for example, they're going to require insurance and insurance will not uh, provide you insurance until you have a survey on your boat. Um, some of them will give you like a certain number of years uh, from the last survey and some will say nope you need a survey within X amount of days and so in our case when we bought our 25 foot bay field and we wanted to launch it at the marina in Thunder Bay we needed to get a survey so we paid had our survey done and then basically it came back with a list of recommendations things that we needed to get done um, luckily in that case we actually were told that we got a pretty good deal on the boat um, only to find out that the engine didn't actually run and uh, we had to get a rebuilt engine for that one. But in a survey where it's in the water and can be seen running, that would have been determined immediately. So being that this is a project boat, now um, we will be required, because we don't have a hull number yet, we have to actually register the boat as a project boat with Transport Canada in order to get that whole number and that's what you would give to insurance. Um, so lots of people don't understand how you would go about getting a whole number for insurance and in Canada that's the way you would go about it. So what do I recommend for somebody who's buying a boat? Um, the first thing I would recommend is go to a boat show and get on as many boats as you can get on. Um, look at things that you wouldn't necessarily think of when you're walking onto a boat. So most people look at a boat and they go, yeah, the flow of this boat's really great. I like that it has X, Y, Z, has this many cabins. But things that you don't think about are like your bilge depth. So if you have a shallow bilge, you need to think about your bilge as basically what's keeping you uh, from having water in your living space. So at some point in time, your boat's likely to get water in it. And if you have a very shallow bilge and your bilge pump can't keep up with it, you're gonna have water in your boat very quickly. Um, so you wanna have a nice deep bilge. You also wanna have um, good bilge pumps, multiple bilge pumps, redundancies, all those sorts of things. Uh, the bilge is where you're going to store a lot of food when you go on passages, so that is uh, something that I didn't really think about when we purchased this boat. Not just that, access to your bilge. So when we bought our boat, um, there was very little access to the bilge, and we will likely have to make more access to the bilge because if you end up with, let's say, a hole in your hull, you need to be able to access it and you don't have time to be pulling out power tools to cut a hole into your bilge in order to figure out where the water is coming from. Um, when you're looking at boats, once you determine what you want in a boat, whether it's a center cockpit, aft cockpit, all those things, you need to actually make that list. And then you need to have it as these are must haves, these are nice to haves, and these are deal breakers and take that list with you. Uh, what, I'm not saying that we made a mistake buying this boat in by any stretch of the imagination, but what I am saying is when you compare what we wanted to purchase versus what we purchased, they are very different things. Now, it will get us out on the water sooner, it will get us out cruising sooner, but we compromised and in some cases, we compromised in areas that maybe I wouldn't otherwise have compromised with had I gotten on more boats. And I'm not just saying at the time when you want to go buy the boat. I'm saying as soon as you start dreaming about it, 
go to a sailboat show. Go and see what's out there, what the designs are like. Uh, talk to other sailors. I highly recommend the Annapolis Sailboat Show for the purpose of there are not only a lot of sailors there, but there are a ton of content creators and you can pick their brains about um, what features they like on their boats, what things they don't like, uh, how would they change their boat if they could uh, redesign it from the ground. So uh, those are all things that at other sailboat shows you might not get. Um, so depending on who you are, you may want to go to that uh, sailboat show. The other reason for attending a sailboat show, you will find out what things cost. You will find out what things are out there for your boat that you might never have dreamed possible. Uh, you might find solutions to problems on a current boat that you have or that would fix a problem on a boat that you find that has a design issue. You might be able to fix that design issue and make that boat work for you. Um, so those are all reasons why I would suggest going to a sailboat show prior to buying a boat. It's also not a bad idea to talk to some brokers, don't sign any paperwork with them, uh, but talk to them, get an idea of what they could offer to you, as well as consider things like consultants rather than brokers. So uh, I believe you can hire a buyer's broker but you can also hire just simply a consultant and a consultant is going to be, I believe, less money than a broker would be. Uh, basically because they're working for you, they are going to make sure that you are not buying something that is not good for you. They're going to make sure that you are getting the things that you want and they're going to advise you about, you know, designs on boats and things that maybe you or I wouldn't look at and consider to be a bad thing or a good thing. Did we overpay for our boat? That's a fun question. Uh, yes and no. Yes, in that once we took everything out of the boat and off of the boat and saw the condition that certain things were in, I felt like we paid a little bit more than we should have. Now, There's an alternative to that, an alternative thought to that in that this will be a brand new boat. So even if we have to put another thirty to sixty thousand dollars into this boat, which would bring our grand total to approximately a hundred and thirty one thousand dollars by the time it's finished, if we had to put another sixty thousand dollars into it that's a pretty good price for a brand new boat. And I think that in all honesty, we could probably get our money out of it. I won't say for sure, but I think that with her being finished, we would get at least most of what we put into her back out. Maybe not all our time, but the rest of it we would get. So what did it cost us as a whole to get the boat? So in order to determine that we need to determine a few things so not just the price of the boat but the recon trip to go and actually look at the boat uh, the trip that we took down to pack up the boat and the uh, stuff that went with it and then the final trip where we actually picked up the boat and brought her home and got her to her final resting place to be worked on so the recon trip um, we took my half ton it's a 2021 GMC Sierra, gets uh, approximately 25 miles to the gallon, uh, Canadian gallons, uh, and I spent between $300 and $350 in fuel. Um, in hotels, it was approximately $450. Hotels were quite pricey, um, even with a uh, discount. Food, we spent about $200. And so the total for that trip would be $950 to $1,000. The boat packing trip, where Colin and I went to pack up the 40-foot sea can contents 
and whatever was in the boat, get it ready for when the truck driver could actually come and take the boat home. Um, that one we spent a little bit more in fuel, uh, basically because we took our motor home. So we have a 2003 Ford Adventurer uh, 20 foot motor home, 24 foot motor home, pardon me. And uh, it gets about 13 to 14 miles per gallon. So we took that uh, in November so that we would be able to have somewhere to stay and have a vehicle big enough to haul back a 20 foot sea can. So we also purchased a sea can and we took our 30 foot flat deck trailer down to Stony Creek uh, in order to pack everything up. So the total cost for that trip, there was about $1,500 in fuel. Uh, there was no hotel bill for that one. Four to $500 in food because as much as I thought we might cook, we didn't have time to cook so we um, still ate our breakfast out, lunch out, supper out. Some days we had two meals, some days we had three, and then just, you know, snacks in between. And then we also purchased a 20-foot uh, sea can to bring everything home, so that was another $2,750. So the total for that trip was uh, between $4,650 and $4,750 approximately. The boat hauling trip where Murray and Colin went to be the pilot vehicle for Farron, uh, the fuel for that one I estimate to be about $450 to $500. Uh, my husband drives a 2013 Silverado. They had to take the long road to come home. They couldn't travel as fast. Um, it was also winter time, so the vehicle wasn't getting as good of mileage. So that's what I estimate the fuel bill to be on that. Uh, hotels, I estimate to be between 600 and 800. Um, basically, it we were kind of booking as they went, and I kind of lost track of what the actual costs of the hotels were. So they were gone four or five nights. Um, so that's where the estimate comes in there. Uh, meals, I estimate that they spent about $600 while they were away for that period of time. Uh, the truck driver fee was approximately $9,000. Um, I don't remember exactly the, the total value, but that's what I would estimate it to be. We had initially negotiated a lower rate, but with having to get another trailer, um, it was totally understandable uh, that the driver wanted a little bit more because he was put out another day in order to bring the boat home. So we were totally fine with that. Most of the other uh, parties who had expressed interest in hauling our boat wanted at least double what we paid him, um, if not more. And then we had the crane uh, at the Stony Creek end where they lifted the boat onto the trailer. That was initially supposed to be, I believe, 2,500, but it ended up being 3,500. And the reason for that is that when they showed up on the first day and they lifted the boat, they weren't actually able to complete the job. So they came back the next day and had to go through the whole setup process again and then lifted the boat on. So they weren't there as long on the first day uh, because once they lifted it and realized it couldn't be hauled, they could just put it back down. It was fairly easy. The next day, they were there a lot longer because as much as they knew where to put the straps and they knew what to expect, now it actually had to go on the truck and they had to wait until the boat was fully secured on the truck before they could actually let the straps off and be able to pack up and be on their way. So the total for the boat hauling trip, uh, I approximated it and I'm going to go with the higher end of things because I'm sure that it was closer to the higher end. Uh, so that was estimated to be about $14,400. So in addition to the fees that were paid at the Stony Creek end, we also needed to be able to get the boat off the trailer in Thunder Bay. So that required us hiring another uh, crane on operator and rigger and that total was approximately $1,450. So overall uh, the price of the boat it started 
uh, with them asking $80,000. Now, when we saw what was there and we saw the amount of work, we somewhat underestimated the amount of work and we still thought that we were giving him a fairly fair offer at $50,000. Now, obviously he didn't accept the $50,000. He came back to us with a counter offer and it was eventually agreed that we would pay $60,000 with the dinghy and outboard included because that was the uh, one thing that he had said he had and he wasn't planning to include it, but it was um, something that we wanted to have included and it was also what we took with us um, when we provided him with the deposit for the boat. So just to simplify things, I'm going to give you the total, but I'm going to use the higher end of the estimated costs um, rather than the lower end when I um, gave kind of brackets for what we estimated it cost. So the total cost for the boat uh, was $60,000 for the actual purchase of the hull and uh, everything that went with it. Uh, the recon mission was about $1,000. The pack up uh, was $4,750. Hauling the boat from Stony Creek, Ontario to Thunder Bay, $14,400. And then the offloading crane in Thunder Bay was $1,450. For a grand total of $81,600 to get the boat from Stony Creek, Ontario to Thunder Bay, Ontario, where we can now work on her. If there are any questions that you have that I didn't answer about the boat buying process, you can uh, ask them in the comments and I will try to reply to them to the best of my knowledge. Um, obviously, we're not experts at buying a boat, but this was our experience and uh, we wanted to share it with you. If you're still with me, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, please, if you want to follow our journey, uh, subscribe to our channel, as well as like, uh, share, and comment. That really helps the algorithm, and it's greatly appreciated, totally free to do. Um, as far as the comments, I will try to get back to everybody. Please keep them uh, constructive. Uh, we do appreciate feedback.